Meet Roby. It used to be a robot, now it's a solar tracker, and it is bolted to a concrete slab right outside of my company. We all know about global climate change. If we want to stop the climate crisis, we need to change our energy supply and rely on renewable energy sources. Solar power is a true gateway drug to energy production. And combined with other methods, like wind and water turbines, they may be the foundation on keeping our planet in one piece. Roby is equipped with two solar panels, a unique mechanical drivetrain and a sophisticated brain. It fits the German law of the balcony power plant and could be installed in every household's garden with a bare minimum of paperwork. Well, yeah, and also a forklift. In this video, we're about to discuss if everyone should build their own solar tracker and how you would do it anyways. My name is Jan. Welcome to another video on this channel right after the intro break. Two years ago, I bought this 6 axis KUKA robot and saved it from being trashed. At the time, I didn't have any specific plans as stated in my initial video about it. So I set up a Discord server as a discussion platform and many good ideas came up. But there were also many drawbacks and nothing really convinced me. At some point, Julian, which you will meet later again, proposed the idea of repurposing the mechanical system to a solar tracking robot. We were all on fire. Unusual solutions, upcycling, sustainability, renewable energy. It checks all the boxes. Once again, we met at the drawing board to discuss the possibilities of the existing system, the requirements of the finished product and how to get there with the most resource-friendly solution possible. The main target was to make the energy yield as efficient as possible. This means the tracker has to follow the sun in some way or the other. Comparing different graphs of energy output compared to one or two axis tracking, we concluded that having just a rotary axis is the most efficient way to go. It ups the yield by up to 40% compared to a fixed system, but loses only a few percent compared to a two axis setup. However, looking at the type label of the KUKA controller, the standby energy consumption alone exceeds the power output of the solar panels. So, running the robot in its original setup was out of the question. Building a drivetrain that turns a one-ton heavy structure precisely to the sun's direction is an interesting task. Since you only have to do around 200 degrees of movement over the course of the longest summer day, speed is obviously not the issue here. The trouble starts with making it energy efficient and probably rigid at the same time. Just imagine how much torque this 4 square meter sail 4 meters up in the air will be able to generate if heavy wind is blowing. To counteract this force, we will use mechanical advantage over brute force power. Using as much of the existing infrastructure as possible would be a smart move since everything is built to industrial heavy-duty standards. Disassembling the rotary axis servo revealed the shaft features a 12mm hex at the end which we could use to adapt the robot's internal rotary gear. Measurements showed, in order to turn the robot a single rotation, the servo shaft needs to be turned 180 times. Also, all of the servos have a strong brake built into them, which can be hijacked with 24 volts applied to the connectors. I made some basic tests to measure the holding torque, which came to around 35 Newton meters. The final setup consists of a NEMA 23 stepper motor coupled with a 1 in 20 planetary gear, which comes down to a 1 to 3600 gear reduction. I 3D printed an adapter from the servo shaft and epoxied a 12mm socket into there. Additionally, I designed and 3D printed a housing that sits on top of the existing A1 servo, which blends in quite nicely. All the existing servo lines, couplings and drag chains are reused to connect to the brake and stepper motor. The mounting for the solar panels is done by steel welding construction. I used the robot arms bolt pattern to create a base plate which can be screwed on. 
With the help of my boy Noah, we welded some 80x60 tubing to the base plate to create more clearance and raise the panels even higher in the air. Additional 50x50 square tubing was used to create a frame and tie the solar panels into the mounting holes. After a quick paint job, I again had some help to mount the construction to the robot arm and install the panels for a first glance. The inverter found a mounting spot, an additional switching cabinet was installed and mounting for end stops were drilled. With a very basic setup, the robot made its first move for the first time in years. To train a robot to follow the sun's path, there are certainly a lot of valid options. We could either use some kind of sensors to measure the direction of the highest energy input and constantly adjust to that point. The upside? It is comparably easy to build and yields the best output for almost any situation. The downside? With only one axis to move, we lack the ability to move the panel straight up into the sky in case of a cloudy day. Also, since the environment the robot will be installed in has a lot of windows and other reflective surfaces, we might end up with false inputs that might screw up the controller loop. That being said, we settled on using math to calculate the sun's position and have it just follow that route. At this point, I want to give Julian the opportunity to explain what his controller bot does, the SolarBot V2. Hi guys, I am Julian and I am the brain of the whole project. <coughs> we just need to control one axis. Simple enough, right? Tricky problems deserve a smart solution. What do we have? The robot itself and also the sun. The robot can communicate with the internet and can for example ask what time is it. If the internet responds, the robot does its thing. Oh sorry, I didn't meant that. It's more like calculating the actual position. If the sun position is off the actual position of the robot, the axis will move. Oh, not this axis. I meant this. If the sun has set, the robot will park itself to the next sunrise position. In reality, an ESP32 is handling all 294 lines of code. The ESP32 is the biggest component on the circuit board. On the top, we have the power supply and sensor inputs, as well as the brake output. On the bottom, there are two outputs for stepper drivers. If you want a follow-up video, maybe we are bringing the A5 axis for the elevation to work. And then, I don't have to design a second PCB. Conclusion time. First of all, Producing electricity is kind of addictive. You set up a solar module and throughout the next days and weeks you find yourself refreshing the energy output summary of your inverter constantly. Not so fun fact. If your country's grid relies heavily on burning fossil energy sources in order to produce just one kilowatt hour of electricity at your outlet, a modern coal power plant needs to burn around 1.1 kilograms of coal. Just imagine the pile of coal it needs to cover your yearly consumption. This setup is capable of producing around 700 kilowatt hour annually, which is pretty much half of our households of three's consumption. So just doubling the peak power and some basic battery storage solution would be sufficient to make our household self-sustainable in terms of electricity. Crazy, right? So using a massively over-engineered six-axis, six-figure industrial robot to move 600 euros worth of solar equipment around seems pretty much overkill. You have to write your own software, troubleshoot a bunch, seal and rust proof everything so it will survive rain, wind and weather. Also you need a really solid foundation to mount it to, so next wind will not tip it over. A regular balcony power plant should pay for itself over the span of a few years, depending on how much energy you can use yourself. Adding all these components doesn't help the calculation. So, to conclude the age-old question, should you mount your solar panels to a 6-axis robot? Yes, you totally should. <laughs> I mean, just have a look at it. And with that in mind, keep on making guys. See you next time. Bye. Noah, sag mal was Tolles. Voll nette, wir am schönsten. Super Sache. <lacht>